Believe it or not, the Ontario Liberals actually want to spend $100 million on, on building more fancy LCBO stores. I don't think that's a good use of taxpayers' dollars, and people are waiting far too long for a health care appointment with their doctor, for an MRI, and we're staring at a $30 billion deficit. We need to end that practice, and you know what? Let's let the private sector into the alcohol business. Let's have some more competition. It's time to end the LCBO and beer store monopolies. Ontario PC leader Tim Hudak, he wants to privatize the LCBO. For those of you unfamiliar with that acronym, it stands for the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. It's the largest single alcohol purchaser in the world, holding a monopoly on all the alcohol distributed in Canada's largest province. And like children who cannot be trusted with the keys to daddy's new car. The fine people of Ontario live under a prohibition era system. It's ancient and the government controls it all. And that's tyrannical. Huge distribution, one huge bureaucracy. Even the clerks at the liquor stores are government employees. Over 250 LCBO employees made the so-called sunshine list. That means government employees were paid over $100,000 a year. Nearly double the salary of the average Canadian. It's just the tip of the iceberg of the problem with this quagmire of a government mess. So folks, it's about time a politician in Ontario suggested this no-brainer because it is Canadian common sense. Look, Ralph Klein said it best in the 1990s when he told Albertans that he wanted to get the government out of the business of doing business. And he did. In 1993, the Klein government announced it would dismantle and sell off the Alberta Liquor Control Board. It overturned a 1916 prohibition law that banned wholesale and retail sale of liquor in Alberta. Now, prior to 1993, the selection in Alberta was minimal. There were 2,200 products available chosen by government bureaucrats and 803 liquor stores. Today, there are 1,959 retailers across Alberta offering over 17,000 varieties of wine, beer, and spirits. And with more selection, guess what? Tax revenues went up. They increased with greater profit margins. So the government didn't lose revenue. Markets can get this done. They provide selection, convenience, help balance prices. Ralph Klein Economics worked in Alberta. By cutting red tape and reducing government, the economy grew. And there was massive wealth creation in Alberta. That's what used to be called the Alberta Advantage. And it's because of Ralph Klein's policies that Alberta actually became the only debt-free province. Now, the Sun's own Joe Warmington broke down the numbers in Ontario. It's sad. For an average 750 milliliter bottle of spirits, say gin or vodka, LCBO buys the bottle from the distillery for $5.52. It is then slapped with a tax of 351, that's $3.51, federal excise tax, then a 38 cent environment levy, then $2.88 in HST, and a remarkable $12.72 LCBO markup. So the price you pay at the till is over 25 bucks for a bottle they paid five and a half for. No wonder. People are shopping elsewhere. Here's a little cross-border shopping guide between Ontario stores and a liquor store across the border in Buffalo. Crown Royal, $17 in Buffalo. In Ontario, at the LCBO, $27.95. 18-pack of beer, 18 bucks in Buffalo. In Toronto, over $30. And a bottle of Silver Patron sells at almost $80 a bottle up north, compared to under $46 south of the line. Folks, that's called a major ripoff. Another justification for the control board you'll often hear from LCBO defenders is that it helps keep booze out of the hands of minors. Well, the Sun's very own David Menzies put that BS to rest when he dressed a young teenage boy in a burqa and the child was able to purchase alcohol at several LCBO outlets. And he wasn't even asked for ID. Now, to debunk some social mythology about market distribution of alcohol, let me point out a Frontier Center comparison. They used Calgary police data and found that crime did not go up in Alberta after privatization, nor did the number of problem drinkers. Prohibition policies failed. They failed in the 20s, and it's taken almost 100 years to shed the consequences of those 
terrible ideas. The policies did not stop alcoholism or alcoholics. It simply made the problem worse for them. People who are addicted to alcohol are willing to pay much more for it. They'll buy alcohol and forego other stuff. That's the problem with big government solutions. They end up doing more harm than good. And finally, some people argue that because Ontario is such a large purchaser, well, it can get a better price, better deal. Well, any gain in purchasing power is not passed on to the consumer. Prices in Ontario are not better. They're worse. They're a lot worse. They'll drive you to drink. And it's why Ontarians are voting with their wallets and driving to neighboring provinces or across the U.S. border to get better deals. Ontarians need to wake up to the bloated size of their provincial government. They need to sober up to face the $250 billion provincial debt. Yeah, $250 billion. Selling off the LCBO would be a good first step. That's Canadian common sense. And the monopoly on liquor. Ontario Conservative leader Tim Hudak making a plea for privatization, reopening a debate that's never really gone away. There are a number of justifications that proponents make for the government control of booze, like the uh, state does a better job of keeping alcohol out of the hands of minors. Our next guest has an arsenal of counter-arguments for every single justification to maintain government control. It's time for some Friday Fury. Anthony Fury, comment editor and columnist for the Ottawa Sun. Hey, Anthony. Hey, Charles. Well, we have no alcoholism in Ontario, of course, uh, because of the Liquor Control Board. Uh, no alcoholism at all. Not like all that alcoholism you have in, in western New York. <laughs> exactly. Look, Charles, the litmus test for me is pretty simple. Government should not be in that many businesses, particularly not consumer goods businesses. There are so many arguments of, oh, but if we get rid of, if we dismantle government control of alcohol, this will happen or that will happen or revenues will drop. Ultimately, should the government be in the business of doing this, competing against private companies or, in some cases, taking a monopoly and not even letting private companies participate in this sector? And ultimately, it's just not the government's place. It's, it's been this way since uh, the 30s, but it's time to get rid of it. You know, if um, a government in Ontario said that we really don't need to build more highways because the ones we've got right now are wonderful for the amount of slow-moving vehicles that we had in the 1930s, they would be laughed out of office. But all of this LCBO stuff is a fossil. It doesn't matter how new the stores look. The idea is a fossil. Can you explain to me why there's an appetite in Ontario to the extent that there is among the public for the ancient idea of the government bear-hugging liquor? Ultimately, fear of change and a love of nanny statism, you make a great point about calling it a, a long time fossil because it was created in the 30s as a response to prohibition. We had prohibition and we thought, well, we need to ease it, we need to get rid of it. Oh, what do we do now? How do we segue it into just average society? Well, the government will control it for a bit, one presumes, and a bit has turned into approaching onto a century. Really, we should have gotten rid of this decades ago. There, there, there's a bit of an argument for it having existed in the first place to make that segue and transfer possible. But now this is simply a consumer good that sure, admittedly can harm you, which is why we have regulations like you can't drink and drive, but cigarettes are out there in stores and, and many other things that people think are dangerous, like junk food that people want to tax and ban and over-regulate. I, I just think we have to let but both uh, the individual, personal responsibility, and the private sector take, uh, take the burden of alcohol. Anthony, do people get, I mean, we, we laid out the numbers and they're, they're stark, and when the government buys a $5 bottle and charges the public 25 for it, how on earth is that not a ripoff? I mean, seriously, seriously, think about this. Can you imagine if this was a story about Loblaws charging people $25 for something it pays five dollars for in the, in the society that we live in right now hate the rich hate the corporations how much hate uh, could people gin up on that kind of margin sure and one of the main arguments that people make for keeping the lcbo is that it's actually given ontario about 1.5 billion dollars a year on profits on top of tax revenues so they say why on earth would you get rid of anything that uh, 
that, that is a positive revenue source. And I think that's a fallacious argument only because by that logic, we could buy out the Four Seasons chain from Izzy Sharp and, and take that over and make a lot of money on it. But no, we have one of the reasons that they are able to profit so well, despite the fact that they pay their employees higher than a, a private sector liquor retailer would, is because they do have considerable markups. Now, I, I, I don't want to get too bogged down on this only because there are papers out there arguing, well, in fact, the private sector or, or certain types of alcohol and certain brands in Alberta have become more expensive since they privatized. Well, but that's not the litmus test in the end. The litmus test is that they just shouldn't be doing it. And presumably, prices for many products would also go down for the consumer. If you've got hundreds of employees at the LCBO making over $100,000 a year, 250. do you think that would send home the message that one of the reasons you're paying way more than you have to for the wine, the gin, the scotch, the rye, what have you, is because all of these employees making over $100,000 are getting your money? Right. They come out with glossy magazine publications. They do fancy events, and, and they do them pretty well. People are, are satisfied with them. But they do these events, they make these magazines, and of course there is, a, there is a cost of business to doing that. Then there are people who they pay quite well to do this, who obviously are, are entrenched in the status quo and want it to remain. And, and clearly the private sector would just be able to choose whether or not they are paying people $400,000 a year, which is the amount that the president and CEO of the LCBO made last year. Anthony, without getting into the weeds of, uh, of revenue and, and taxes and real estate too, too deeply, do you think people understand that the fatter your public sector, I don't care whether it's uh, Winnipeg, in Manitoba, Ontario, Edmonton, it, it doesn't matter. It's just economics 101. The fatter your public sector is, the higher taxes are going to be, and the higher taxes are going to be, uh, the ceiling gets lowered on what your real estate is worth. So what most people have as their nest egg is less valuable the thicker, the bigger your public sector. Do you think, do you think people get that? Do you think people understand that all of this LCBO stuff and all of these other, the Ontario Lottery, Co all of these crown corporations are sucking the future out of people's savings? Well, no, I don't think they do because I think it's generally considered in bad taste and taboo to have that conversation. I don't really understand why. <laughs> no, you know it is. People think you and I are crazy for, for arguing those points that a continual, a, but a not, leviathan not. government that continues to bloat is not in anyone's best interest at all on, on economic indicators. But, uh, but, but people get enraged when you try to have that conversation. But it's crazy. It's just, it's just damn foolish because it's not an opinion. It's a fact. And it's costing us money, and it's a much more important conversation than worrying about the, you know, the top 1% of achievers. I mean, why don't we look at what we're not achieving as a middle class, not achieving because of, because of big Leviathan government. Anthony, thanks very much for the fury on Fridays, as always. Have a great weekend.